Meaning he'll come right up and he'll surround Jerusalem. But God says in the very breath of the land, O Emmanuel, that he will not conquer the city. He says in the verses 9 and 10, <coughs> he says, Be shattered, O you peoples, and be broken in pieces, and give ear, O you from far countries. And he gives a double, a double, gird yourselves, but be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, but be broken. Take counsel together. He says, gather up all your war plans. Gather up all your greatest generals. Study war. Prepare this and map this out. Do the best that you can do. And gather your strong armies. And, and the countless numbers, God says. He says, and then you come against Jerusalem. You come all that you can. But it will not happen. For I am the Lord your God. What's amazing is that Ahaz was instructed to seek God for a sign. And he wouldn't. He wouldn't. I'm not going to call upon God. <coughs> Seeking God was not in his heart. So the people had reason to fear. If we lived it back in that day and understood what it was like when one nation conquered another nation and, and the peoples were taken captive and slaughtered and, and the brutal, inhumane things that were done, it, it, it's, it, it's a frightening thing. It's a horrible thing. And so therefore, when, when you know, the, the people of the land were uh, covered with, they felt secure when they were of a, of a country and of a nation that had the most powerful army on the earth. And we all watch down through history the rise and the fall of nations. Yet our God, who is from ages past, He rules. And His wills and His decrees will always come to pass. So from the very beginning of time, we put our faith and our trust in the Lord. We find that here the plot that they had planned and they began to carry out, God says it will never come to pass. He gives the instruction right here in our verses. Now let's slide over here in verses 12, 13, and 14. 13, he says in 12, do not believe in the conspiracy. He says, don't let the conspiracy, the news, don't let all the, the happenings in the land, don't let the threat of your life and your health and, and um, your, your security, don't let that be the rule of your heart and your life. He says, hollow God. Because what has happened, dear people? Instead of hollowing God in our hearts, we have hollowed this fear. A fear. Not only now, but in so many times, we've hollowed fear. Instead of a people that will stand strong and continue on and be a light and a message and, and basically a strangeness to the rest of the world. We have heard all these verses for months, and especially in Psalm 91. You know, God will protect you, and, and He will not let the disease or the plague come near your dwelling. And we say we believe it, but how little that it changes us. There has been what I have found to come to conclusion in my own heart and mind for, for quite a few is that, um, and, and I say it so kindly, but I say it very boldly, and I say it very carefully, but I say it very lovingly, but very sternly, that is because there's a lack of love for God, that we have ceased to love the Lord with all our heart and soul and mind. Not only have we ceased to come to the house of the Lord, but we have ceased to be um, proactive in laboring for the Lord. And uh, we as God's people have become very little different than the rest of the world. Your God, he says right here, don't hollow the fears and don't make the enemy that which is the love and the affection of your heart because you succumb to it, he says. But he says, hollow God in your mind and in your hearts. Let him be your fear. Let him be your divine refuge because he is your sanctuary. He says, sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts. What do we mean? You sanctify God in your heart. 
You set yourself apart for God. Everything in your heart is for the Lord. And, and, and as He sends you forth to serve Him, you serve Him. And you stand. You stand if He delivers you. You stand if He doesn't. You stand and you serve Him. He sends you out through the loving, pleasant meadows. Or He sends you and casts you into the burning, fiery furnace. You serve Him. You stand if He delivers you. You stand if He doesn't. You let God be the glory of your life. Fear God. He says, fear God. Not anything else. Let God be your fear. And that will conquer the fears of everything else. 1 Peter 1.17 says, Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Deuteronomy 10. And now, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all of his ways. To love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. He says to honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Honor God. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29, 2. Isaiah 25, 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels are of old. Faithfulness and truth. God says here to Isaiah, tell the people to reverence me, trust me, honor me, reverence the Lord. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of his saints and to be had in reverence in all of them that are about him. In Psalm 89, and he is our divine refuge. Proverbs 14, 26 says, in the Lord, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. And his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To run one away from the snares of death. To run one away from the snares of death. And not be captivated by fears in the news. And, and to have been alive in this day. And you read some of the annals of the Assyrians and how even as with pregnant mummies, they would slice open their wombs and yank out their babies, sacrifice their babies unto their gods. And it, the, the brutality would go on and on. And no wonder they were afraid. When nations conquered another nation, their families were scattered. They never saw each other again. Children were carted off while parents were slain. They never saw each other again. God says, don't fear them. Mighty as they are. Powerful as they are. I am the Lord your God. I am your refuge. So when the virus, the Assyrian virus, or anything, any disease, was to come and take your mind captive. Let your faith be strong in the Lord. For He is your refuge. Through the blood of the, the covenant of the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. He is yours. You are His. The Lord Himself has a wall of fire around Him. And He, therefore, is the wall of fire around His children. So in the name of Christ, we press on and we sanctify God in our hearts. God, it is you whom I love. It is you whom I serve. I turn away from sin. I sanctify you. I, as Jesus said, Father, I now sanctify myself for their sakes. There right before he went to the cross and you watch him in Gethsemane. He said, I sanctify myself. I set myself apart for you, Father, for their sakes. You watch him wrestle in Gethsemane. And he comes out of Gethsemane having won the victory. No fears for what is he is about to go through, what he is about to face. And they will take him. They will slice him. They will rip him apart. His bowels will stare at him. His guts will hang from him. He will be marred in, as in he'll be totally unidentifiable. And there upon the cross he will lay down his life. And they will suspend him. And his life will be given. His blood will be shed. 
for the sins of mankind. No fear. When you set yourself apart for God, death doesn't even strike you with fear. Even in that, we fear perhaps how we may die and how we may suffer. But in that, we give those fears to the Lord and be that as it may. How is it these who have been martyred for Christ throughout the centuries endured such inhumane actions against them that continue on today? Because of their faith in God's faithfulness in their lives. So in this strong word from God, he says, no matter how strong the Assyrian Empire is in our land today and around the world, he says, my name is Emmanuel and I am with you. And we come here as a word of God and then certainly um, established upon the Lord as we settle into our hearts by grace that He is our God and I must press on to serve Him gladly all of my days. All of my days. He is my sanctuary. We sing these things, we read these things, we say these things, but we are slow to believe it. For when we believe within the heart, we press on. The Lord says, I will guide you with mine eye. I will guide you. So let the life be consecrated unto the Lord in unconditional surrender. And we shall feel the hand of the Lord upon us for good. When the ways are many, we shall know the right one. So what will it be when the news of Assyria is approaching, is surrounding. Will it be the fear of Assyria? Will it be faith in Almighty God? Heavenly Father, Thy Word is true. Thy Word is a sure anchor for us in our life. You delivered Jerusalem just as you said. And uh, you are our high tower. You are our surety. And God, may we lay hold of the promises of God. Immerse in the word. Immerse in the scriptures. Immerse in the promises. And claim them and claim them and claim them. And rejoice. For people who rest in God are happy people. People that press on. And in the midst of that, yes. As the word declares, honor men, honor the king, love the brethren, that our reverence is in God, that we live wise, we live peaceably, we live meek, we live holy, we live boldly for the Lord in these days that others may know. Strengthen our hearts, establish our hearts, that we will be a vessel of righteousness. We may be hard pressed on every side. We may feel times that we're beaten down. But no matter what, we are not forsaken. And we're not done until the Lord calls us on home. And even then we pass the baton on to the next one. And the, and the righteous glory of the Lord continues on. Until the day when it shall be no more. And God you call us away. And Christ will rule himself with a rod of iron. And then on that great eternal day. When he gathers all his people with him in that great eternal home and all is said and done of sin is gone. Oh Lord, we must seize the day and rise to where we are and, and, and be faithful unto the Lord in, in all of our heart and all of our soul and our mind and just love the Lord with everything we have. May our hearts be sanctified unto the Lord. May our heart our mind reverence the Lord. Be holy unto the Lord. And truly in all things and know that we, as was read for us this morning, we're going to gird up the loins of our mind. Gird them up. And we will be the Lord's mighty army. 
as we keep our eyes fixed on you, turning our eyes upon Jesus and looking full in his wonderful face and all the things of the world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Let it be so.